What's up guys, Josiah Martin here with the GoPro Hero 9 and I'm gonna be helping you guys take the absolute best photo possible using this camera. Well, hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm the Alaskan Outsider and I love getting outside and exploring Alaska, all while helping you guys get the best out of your video and photo gear. So to get the absolute best photo possible using the GoPro Hero 9, you need to have good settings, good composition, and a good edit. And I'm gonna break those three concepts down in this video. Now, before I get to that, I wanna just break down quickly the pros and cons of this GoPro Hero camera, because it does not make sense to use this camera in every situation. But there are some good environments where this camera can really shine. So for one, it's incredibly small, compact, very durable. You can take it anywhere. It's waterproof up to 10 meters. So you can take it diving and get some amazing underwater photos. It's got a really wide field of view, equivalent to about a 16 millimeter camera. So you can get some really nice wide angle landscapes. And it also has infinite focus. So you're never having to always change the focus and get the focus right. It's just always gonna be infinite, which can be a pro and also a con. So let's talk about some of those cons because it does have infinite focus. You can't get some really close macro shots of details. Everything's gonna be in focus. So if you're trying to take a nice portrait of your friend, you're not gonna be getting a nice bokeh effect with the background all blurred out and a crisp focus on their face. Speaking of problems taking portraits with this camera, it is a really wide fisheye lens and you will get some distortion on people's faces. Now, the closer they are to the center of the screen, the less distortion you'll notice. But if they're on the edge of the screen, you're gonna see some really warped faces that is not very flattering. Now this new GoPro does have a 20 megapixel photo, so it does give you more information to edit, but compared to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, it is just not able to capture that much information for post-processing because it does have a pretty small sensor size, which is also going to affect your low light performance. And when you pick up this GoPro, your only option is really to hand hold it, unless you pick up a Joey pod or my very favorite, selfie stick. This selfie stick has come with me on some awesome Alaskan adventures. And if you're looking for a selfie stick too, I've linked these items down in the description so you can check them out if you so desire. So let's go ahead and jump into the menu of this GoPro, turn this guy on and show you the best settings that I've come up with to get the absolute best photo out of this camera. So slide to the right to get to the photo mode, tap the screen and pull up the photos and tap this little pin icon to edit your settings. Now for the lens, I've always gone with a wide angle lens. It's a wide angle camera, so there's no reason to try and skirt around that. If you pick linear, there's less fisheye distortion, but I can clean that up in post later. And most of the time, I really want that wide angle view. Now the output setting is probably the most important setting to pay attention to here. You can click standard, which just outputs a basic JPEG photo. You can switch it up to an HDR mode, which takes multiple photos and merges them together to create a better looking image in a really high contrast situation. For example, a really bright sky, but really dark shadows. So the HDR mode blends those images together to create a decent looking shot. There's also what GoPro calls their super photo mode, which is essentially, I don't wanna do any post-processing. I want the GoPro to make all the decisions for me. So you switch it into super photo mode, which essentially allows GoPro the ability to select the best image processing for your shot, which I found that they tend to like using the HDR mode when taking a super photo. And lastly, there's also the raw output mode, which exports a JPEG and a GPR file, which captures the most amount of information and does the least amount of processing to your image, which gives you a lot more control over it when you're editing it. So as a photo editor, you want the most amount of information possible to be editing it later. Now, if you're just wanting this camera to take a cool photo and get it right onto Instagram, super photo is gonna be the mode for you. It does a lot of processing in camera, so that way you can get it right out and onto whichever platform you choose. But if you wanna get the best photo out of this GoPro, which I'm assuming you are because you're watching this video, you're gonna be wanting to shoot in RAW. That way you can get an image that is the least amount of processed in camera, so you can process it yourself in a nice editing software. So for high contrast scenes, it is nice to have this HDR mode but what I've noticed is that if you zoom in on the HDR image, you'll see that the detail is quickly lost. It actually almost looks like a watercolor painting. So at first glance, it looks like a pretty nice photo, but as soon as you zoom in, it quickly 
falls apart. Now in the raw mode, you can zoom in even up to 300% and still see some of the details in this photo. And so for that reason, I definitely prefer capturing that raw image. Now let's quickly breeze through the rest of these settings. Your shutter, you want auto, your EV comp, you're most likely gonna want it at zero. Now, if you have a really high contrast photo, you may want to adjust the comp to focus on the shadows or focus on the highlights so you can move the comp up a stop or down a stop. But if I'm wanting to focus on a certain area of the image, you can actually press, tap and hold the screen and then move this little box that appears into the corner of the image to focus on the shadows or up on the sky to focus on the highlights or somewhere in between. And then if you tap it again, you can actually lock the exposure so that way it doesn't change on you if you're wanting to take multiple shots. The white balance is totally fine to leave on auto. I've never had a need where I needed to change that. The ISO minimum, just leave it 100. Now the maximum here, I actually recommend bringing this all the way down to 400. Some people say you can get away with leaving it around 800 or even 1600, but the higher the ISO is, the higher grain and noise you'll be finding in your image. And because the sensor on this camera is already so small, it doesn't make sense to try and push it past its limitations. Like I said at the beginning of this video, use this GoPro to its strengths, not its weaknesses. Now the GoPro sharpness is defaulted on high and I think it's way too sharp and punchy for me. So I usually bring this down to low. Now, if you don't wanna do any post-processing to this, maybe you can leave it at a medium if you're just wanting to take a super photo and get over with the photo taking process. But for me, I like having low sharpness so that way I can bring some of that back in post as desired. Now for the color mode, there's two options. You can do GoPro or flat. Now the GoPro produces these really bright, vibrant photos with some really nice colors. And I think GoPro does a great job on their color scheme. So unless I'm really trying to alter the colors of a certain scene, I'm gonna be fine using the GoPro color mode. Well guys, that is all the settings that you need to know. So let's talk a little bit about composition. Now, most of you guys, I hope, know what the rule of thirds is. It's essentially where you break up your image into nine quadrants and you're gonna want the focus of your image to either fall on one of those rule of third lines or on one of the intersecting lines. This helps balance out your photo and is most pleasing to the human eye. Now, whenever I go out and I'm trying to take a cool landscape photo, I'm always looking for leading lines, whether it's a ridge line pointing to a nice, beautiful mountain or a stream that meanders down and guides the viewer's eyes further into the image. Leading lines are a big help to guide your spectator's eyes to exactly the place in the picture that you want them to see. So pay attention when you're taking your photo because even just moving two or three feet to the left could really bring out some leading lines that positively impact your photo. Now, when you are looking for leading lines, be careful of horizontal lines. If there's lines that is going across your image, it's actually pulling your viewer's eyes across and off the image instead of towards the center or the main focus point of your photo. Hey, if you guys are finding these tips helpful, would you help me out and like this video? Also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because in the future, I'm gonna be breaking down even more composition tips, talking about the golden spiral, the golden triangle, and other composition tips to help improve your videos and photos. Okay, so now you have a great photo that you've just captured on the GoPro, and now you wanna edit it. I personally edit all of my photos in Adobe Lightroom, which is an amazing application that really allows to fine tune and make some awesome adjustments to create a stellar photo. Now, if you wanna skip the headache of trying to edit your own photos and just wanna throw on a GoPro Lightroom preset that I've created just for you at a very affordable price, I might add, I'll be sure to link that down in the description so you can pick up some awesome Lightroom presets to make your GoPro photos look as good as mine. But let's go ahead and jump into the Lightroom application so I can show you quickly what I like to do for most of my photos. So what I like to do for most of my photos, I grab the slider here, add some contrast, bring down the highlights to, you know, bring a little bit more details into the sky. Oh, we'll bring up the shadows a little bit so you can see the landscape a little bit better. And I like to add just a little bit more whites and bring the blacks down and help with even a little more contrast. I play with the tone curve here, bringing the lights up and the shadows down a little bit. And depending on how bright the vibrance is already on the photo, I'll add some vibrance and bring the saturation up just a tad. And now that photo is looking pretty darn good. From here, I may want to play with the lens distortion to correct that fisheye look and 
and sometimes I go down into the colors to enhance or alter the look of the image to my desired taste. And as I mentioned earlier about creating good composition in your image to really draw the eye of your viewer to a certain point of the picture, you can help your viewer along on their visual journey by enhancing ever so slightly the part of the image you want them to see. So that's when I would take this radial filter tool and put it over that part of the image. I might bump up the exposure touch, the saturation a little, bring up the whites and clarity. And now if I switch that on and off, you can see a very subtle but noticeable improvement to make this part of the image even more rewarding for your spectator. Soon I'm gonna be making a comparison video with the GoPro Hero 9 and the iPhone 11 Pro to show you if you really need to pick up this new GoPro if you already have a high-end smartphone in your pocket. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see that one and many more helpful videos helping you get the most out of your photo and video gear. Well guys, thank you so much for watching to the very end of this video. If you wanna learn more about GoPros and how to get the very best out of them, you can go ahead and click on one of these icons here at the end of this video. Until then guys, I encourage you to go out in nature, get creative, and you can be an outsider too. We'll see you guys in the next video.